Farms.com Market School with expert commodity analyst Mo Agostino is an online educational video series designed to help you, the farmer, improve your knowledge of grain marketing. Farms.com Market School is brought to you by DeKalb Brand Seeds. DeKalb, growing confidence. This is the final uh, video on technical analysis, part three. So again, ho hopefully if you got to this, you've watched part one and two, you'll need to watch at least part one uh, to understand part three. So our topics today include chart patterns such as retracements and corrections, key reversals, relative strength index, MACD, uh, moving average convergence, divergence indicator, moving averages, trend lines, and then the last one. The last one's important, death and golden crosses. If you see this on any chart, whether daily, continuously, weekly, monthly, quarterly, very important you pay attention to that chart. So the ones I like to focus on is key reversals, retracements, moving averages, trend lines, and death and golden crosses. Our first topic today is about technical retracements and corrections. So the retracement is known as a Fibonacci retracement developed in the 13th century by Leonardo Fibonacci. Market moves in cycles. Market tends to correct the preceding move in price. He did a study and he did it across assets, whether stocks or commodities, and this is what he found out. And it does work. Corrections tend to be 38%, 15, 62% correct correction provides price objectives. First objective is 38% correction. The retracement projections will often point to an old resistance or support plan. Again, we talked about that in um, the second part two of technical analysis. So if you need to uh, freshen up on resistance support plan, go watch that video. The retracement projections are often good places to enter position, take profits uh, on a position or identify strike price when putting on a put or call. So here's an example with the 2011 corn December daily futures chart. And again, you're gonna need a, a live quote system to create the Fibonacci retracement. It's a, a tool that you can use on a chart and so so the red lines are, are the um, 38 50 62 percent retracement so what happens is the market's rising all of a sudden it starts to fall maybe you missed an opportunity you didn't sell at the very high you're looking to see whether the market can bounce um, back to some of those highs and you create that Fibonacci retracement to identify those levels of maybe where you want to put in that short or sell some bushels with your local elevator our second topic today is about technical key bearish and bullish reversal chart patterns. So a bearish key reversal, as you can see in our diagram here, um, uptrending sets a higher high and a lower low than the previous day and a close that's lower than the previous day. So you can see at the very far um, right, trading day is wider than the previous day and the close is lower. That's a bearish key reversal. The opposite of that is a bullish key reversal. So in our diagram, you can see at the very far right, the trading rate is wider than the previous day, but the close is higher. These are key. Now, they can also be false signals. So just seeing this chart pattern doesn't mean you need to do something. You need to confirm that change in trend. So a bullish key reversal means that the market was falling. All of a sudden, maybe it's hit a bottom and it's gonna start to go back up. Just because you get it, doesn't mean it's going back up. You need to confirm it. Here's an example of the 2011 December Chicago Wheat Daily Futures Chart, and I've circled the uh, bearish key reversal, and you can see there that the market continues to fall lower. At some point, it hits a bottom. It's actually bouncing off of the 200-day moving average, the red line. It goes back to that resistance plane, bounces off of that to the downside, and then over time, it continues lower. Here's an example with the 2011 November soybean daily futures chart. This is a bullish key reversal. I've circled the bullish key reversal on the chart. And the minute that you get that, the market continues to move higher. You get the higher closing highs and away you go. Our third topic today is about RSI, Relative Strength Index. Here's an example with the 2011 December Kansas City daily futures chart. We've highlighted the red line, the Relative Strength Index. It's a popular momentum measure developed by Wells Wilder in 1978. It's a mathematical formula that uses recent future prices to assess the strength of a trend. It measures the internal strength of a single commodity 
a measure of short-term momentum. Values around 50 indicate there is no trend and no momentum. Values above 50 indicate there is a trend upward during the past 14 days. And the higher the value, the higher the momentum of the trend. Uh, values below 50 indicate there is a downward trend. The lower the value, the stronger the momentum downward. So when you're getting it moving above 50, it can, it can get into 75. The value gets as high as 100. If you're at 100, it can stay there for some time and vice versa. If it falls below 50 and goes to zero, it can stay at zero for some time. So just because the market may look like it's topping or bottoming, market can stay there for some time. Price and RSI diversion suggests a price reversal. RSI gives early warnings. RSI alerts producers to opportunities keep RSI updated. So in this example, you can see that the RS, RSI follows the market. The market's creating a double top. We talked about that in uh, part two of uh, technical analysis. Uh, and you can see the RSI is almost creating the same double top. So here's another example with the 2011 November Canola Daily Futures Chart. And at the very bottom, we've highlighted um, where the market gets to 75, which means it's over uh, bought, or if it gets to 25 below that uh, 50, it becomes an oversold market. Our fourth topic today is about MACD moving average convergence divergence indicator. Here's an example with the 2011 December uh, OAT daily futures chart. And again, I've highlighted that uh, MACD. Um, a popular momentum measure developed by Gerald Appel in the late 70s. Moving average convergence divergence is one of the simplest and most effective momentum indicators available. So the RSI and this MACD are momentum indicators. MACD turns turns two trend following indicators moving averages into a momentum oscillator by subtracting the longer moving average from the shorter moving average don't get too concerned about the definition macd offers the best of both worlds trend following and momentum macd fluctuates above and below zero the line so you draw a line with zero as the moving averages converge cross and diverge producers can look for uh, single line crossovers, center line crossovers, and divergences to generate signals. So here's an example with the 2011 December Minneapolis Wheat Daily Futures Chart. And again, I've highlighted that um, MACD at the very bottom that shows the market moving above and below zero. Here's another example with the 2011 October CME Lean Hogs Daily Futures Chart. And again, um, I've highlighted where the, the MACD starts to rise and that's when futures start to rise as well. Our first fifth topic today is about technical moving averages and these are key. This moving average is very key um, going forward. So the moving averages and you can see it in our 2011 December cotton daily futures chart, basically they smooth out the rise. So this is known as a bar chart, whether it's a daily or continuation chart. Uh, within that bar chart, you've got those red lines, the blue lines, the green, and the purple. The red is the 200-day moving average. The 100, the purple is the 100-day moving average. The blue is the 50, and the green is the 30. The green uh, is the shortest whereas the 200 are the longest and it just smooths out the ride. But uh, there's some important things to remember about moving averages. So here's an example with the 2011 October uh, gold monthly futures chart. And this is when you get the blue line. Well, in this case, we've highlighted it. You can see that all the moving averages are crossing above the 200 day moving average. So in other words, the moving average is flattened. Once they flatten and they start to go the opposite way, that's a major buy signal. So when you get a crossover like that, when all the moving averages averages, whether it's the um, 30, 50, 100 crossing above the 200, that's very, very bullish. If you're a speculator, you go long. If you're a hedger, a farmer, do nothing. Just wait because the, the trend has changed and prices should move considerably higher. And you can see here, if you were a patient speculator or hedger, you would have made a good amount of money waiting for that price to go higher. Here's another, another example with 2011 October crude oil daily futures chart. Again, we've highlighted um, where we get a bearish moving average signal. In other words, when the market starts to trade below the 200-day, it's a very, very bearish signal. You need to pay attention because the market usually will move much lower. Our sixth topic today is about trend lines. Here's an example with the 2013 December corn daily futures chart. And you can see that the price of corn is just grinding lower ever so slightly over time. What you do is you connect the points at the very top uh, and you create this upper line and then you do the same thing at the lower line and you create this best fit 
and it creates a trading range. And so what the market does is, it uh, the speculator, they start at the very top at 650, they start to sell it. It could be a fundamental reason why they're selling, and in this case it was, there was gonna be a lot of bushels coming to market soon. Um, and eventually they'll, they'll stop selling, they drive it back up, they hit that upper end of that line, as a, and you can use that as your resistance plane, and then they start selling again. And then they go back up, sell it again. But each time they sell it, they go and move the market to new lows. And by the time 12 months passes, you go from 650 to 450. Where would you like to sell corn? I think you'd like to sell corn at 650. So, so draw those trend lines. They're very important. It can help you manage that resistance and again sell that resistance. Um, and sometimes when the market hits that lower end, that support line, it can be oversold and you want to avoid that. You might want to wait to see if the market bounces off of that and goes back to that resistance plane. Our seventh topic today is about death and golden crosses. And this is, a, if you're going to spend any time on any indicator, chart pattern, these are the two I want you to spend some time on. Why? Because they're very important. 99% of the time these work without a doubt. I've used it over 30 years and they work. So if you want a, a simple way of doing a better job with your marketing plan, use these. So here's an example of the 2013 June Hog Daily Futures Chart. And this is when the 50 day moving average, the golden cross is known when the 50 day moving average, we just covered moving averages, um, which is the blue line in my case, you can use whatever colors you want, crosses the 200 day, the red line, when you get that, that's known as a golden cross. When you get it, pay attention. As a speculator, you need to go along the market. If you're a hedger, if you're a farmer, do nothing. This is when you stop selling bushels and you wait. And if you waited in this case, look at what happened. Unbelievable, okay? Market just takes off and goes to uh, all-time record highs. Here's another example with the 2014 December Corn Daily Futures Chart, and this is the opposite of the golden cross, known as a death cross. When you get a death cross, and you can see it at the upper left-hand corner, I've, I've highlighted that death cross, you gotta sell it. Don't think that you can outsmart the market because you won't. Uh, nine out of 10 times the market's gonna make you look pretty bad. So in this case, if you had a sold futures or sold some corn bushels, this is when you gotta get aggressive with your selling plan. Uh, because in this case, it would have avoided you from um, uh, seeing the price of corn drop dramatically from where it was when we got that death cross signal. In summary, understanding chart patterns such as retracements, key reversals, moving averages, golden death crosses can help producers identify when the hold or fold or when to pull the trigger. Technical analysis should always be used in conjunction with fundamental analysis because if you use it on its own, it's not 100% foolproof. Think of technical analysis as a possible warning signal that a trend may be changing. For technical analysis to work, you have to apply a lot of discipline time and time again.